Hi, I'm Katie, and welcome to Hey It Gets Better. This is the podcast where I chat to people about the ups and downs of their lives and how they got to where they are now. Life can be pretty tough sometimes. There's no escaping that fact. But at Hey It Gets Better, we're all about talking about the journey. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And remember, hey, it gets better. Hi everyone, welcome to Hey It Gets Better. And today I'm joined by Sarah Townsend. Um, It's great to have you here, Sarah. Lovely to be here. Thanks for inviting me on, Katie. So Sarah is a freelance copywriter and an editor, as well as the author of the book Survival Skills for Freelancers. Um, Is there anything you want to add there, Sarah? Um, That sounds like a good intro to me, Katie. I've been freelance for 20 years. It could be worth mentioning that I've run my own business for that long because it's a very long time. (laughs) Yes, I do remember reading your book and you were talking about things like social media was not a thing. (laughs) Yeah, there was no social media when I started out freelance. There was barely any internet, let alone social media. (laughs) So things have changed a lot over the years. Yeah, I can imagine you must have like, well, you do, I've read your book, so you have some really great advice and I can't wait to chat to you today. So I'm just going to start with the question I always start with, which is really broad, um, but is what challenges have you faced to get to where you are now? and I know that there's like quite a few things you could talk about, so I'll just leave, leave it open to you. Wow, yeah, that is a broad, that is a big broad question. I guess first and foremost, the the challenge when you first start your career of not knowing what you want to do. For me, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do, and I certainly had no idea that it wasn't part of a big plan that I'd end up working in marketing. I didn't go to uni. Um, and I, I could have done, I didn't want to, I sort of explained this story in the intro to the book. And, um, actually I think that's part of the free sample. So if anybody wants to download the free sample and hear the, hear the, uh, the story in detail, then free, feel free to do that. But, um, yeah, for me, I just sort of found my way into working in an admin role for an insurance company and it wasn't the most exciting job in the world but I met some nice people I learned some really useful skills that I still use to this day um basic kind of customer service and admin skills and that kind of thing and it was all helpful getting me to where I am today and yeah since I've been freelance tons and tons of hurdles um a lot of them are the same as anybody who is self-employed will find on a regular basis things like the unpredictability of self-employment not knowing where your next job or your next client or your next project is coming from that is a that unpredictability is a real challenge and it takes a lot of getting used to in fairness, I don't really think I ever properly got used to it. It's just as I've become busier over the years, there is less uncertainty. Yeah, I'd really love to talk about um one kind of challenge that I came across in your book that I really thought is really important to talk about is burnout. Um, because it can happen, you know, to anyone. It doesn't. You don't have to be self-employed or freelancing. You could even be like having a side hustle and things like that. And I think it's so important at kind of the state and age where working the weekends is kind of glorified and you know Mm. staying up in the evenings till nine to finish off those emails is seen as quite a positive thing I think it's really important to talk about burnout and exactly what you can watch out for yeah I couldn't agree more with you actually on that because I just think that there's too much of this sort of uh, glamorizing of the hustle And there's this sort of message that, oh, you have to be busy, busy, busy all the time. And it's almost as if people think that their self-worth is tied up in how busy they are. And that really shouldn't be the case. It, It really comes to something if that's how people are feeling, that their sort of identity is tied up with what they do as a job. And particularly when you're self-employed, particularly when you work in a creative sort of a job. So obviously I'm a writer, a copywriter, but anybody who is an illustrator or a maker or a producer of products for Etsy or anything that they're kind of graphic designers, illustrators, anybody that's kind of putting 
part of themselves into every job they do, something sort of creative output, it, it's really easy to kind of feel that if you're not working hard enough or you don't have enough work, that that somehow impacts your self-worth. And then the flip side of that is just that feeling that, oh, well, I need to keep working harder and harder because if I'm not busy, then people will think I'm not important or I'm not special or somehow I don't count as much as the busy people. It's just a really damaging way to uh, to to think. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a bit of a cycle as well when you get into that thought pattern and I, I can see it being something that will just repeatedly like play over in your mind and I think there is definitely like something needs to contribute to your self-worth and your identity other than your career and it's really important to identify what those things are. Oh for sure yeah certainly be aware of of what your intrinsic values are as a human being um, and and try not to associate your value with the work that you're doing. I think avoiding um, stress and overwhelm and and ultimately burnout comes down a lot to balance and boundaries. And those are two things, as you know, that I mention a lot throughout Survival Skills for Freelancers, because it's really important as freelancers for us to take on too much and to think that we have to do everything ourselves and not to want to ask for help, to somehow see asking for help as a sign of weakness, whereas it's actually a sign of strength. If you realize that you, you're you not particularly good at something, it's not your area of skill, it's not something you enjoy doing and it's not something that makes you money, then yeah, it's it's a good idea to ask for help and to sort of surround yourself with people, colleagues and peers and friends who can help you out with the things that aren't your skill set. Yes, I love what you say about surrounding yourself with people and asking for help. Because I think as many of us probably experienced during lockdown, the absence of working with people, seeing people on a regular basis, you know, you can feel really lonely and it is tough knowing that and implying that to your work life or how you kind of like set yourself up is so important yeah this is this is such an important point you've raised there I um I actually feel so strongly about the need for connection and um I think the risk when you're working when you're we call it going solo right so I think the risk is that people think oh well I'm going solo now. So I should be somehow a bit more self-reliant or a bit more resilient and robust and all those words. But actually part of how we boost our resilience, because resilience isn't something that you're born with or you're not born with. It's actually, it's like a muscle. You can work on it and you can strengthen it and you can grow your emotional resilience. And doing that makes you better equipped to deal with stress and um, stress and pressure throughout your job and th- all of this advice all applies whether you're self-employed or not whether you're a freelancer or not it's um it's really important stuff yeah I am a li- like little miss stress pants um my dad is always like okay what have you got to be stressed about and I'm like <laughs> you don't understand I'm just a stressed person yeah. and like it's something that you've got to, you know, learn to deal with. (laughs) Yeah, I'm the same. And I think I think half the battle really is having the self awareness to realize that that's how you are. And don't don't try to be something that you're not and don't kind of deny who you are to yourself. Because then every time you do feel like a stress head, you're going to be beating yourself up and you're going to be having this internal dialogue that is not especially supportive of yourself so you might be saying oh you know god you know what 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 do I have to worry about there's people out there who are in much worse situations than me like what who do I think I am to to be worrying about stupid things or whatever but ultimately it's not stupid if it's something that you're anxious or stressed about or it's something that you're worried about then 
cut yourself some slack. I think that's really important. And do lean on other people. Where I was going with what I was saying just now was that because I believe it's so important, I actually made it the first myth chapter within survival skills for freelancers because that feeling of thinking, well, I have to be self-reliant and I have to do everything myself. And, oh, by the way, you know, I have to work alone. And this, again, this applies even for people right now, particularly going back into lockdown where everybody had to work from home. You, you It's really easy to kind of think, God, you know, I've got nobody to talk to. Nobody understands what I'm going through. Nobody really gets it. But in reality, there are tens and probably hundreds of thousands of people out there who are in the same boat as you, who feel the same emotions, they feel the same pressure, they feel the same stress, they think that nobody understands what they're going through. So it's really important to open up about how you're feeling because if you've got the courage to talk confidently and openly about how you're feeling you connect you make deeper and more meaningful connections with other people and then you can support one another through what you're going through I could not agree more because there's loads of communities now of people who are open about how they feel and they support one another in the same challenges I mean, even you being on this podcast, Sarah, you're being open about the challenges. And I know for a fact that people who listen to this podcast, they will message, they message me and they say, I oh, really related to that. Actually, I feel like that now. And it helps people and it helps people know that it's normal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's something that I, something quite specific that some uh kind of scientific fact psychological fact whatever you'd call it but that I mention in the book which is called a vulnerability loop and it's about you know when you're talking to a friend and you think oh I really wish I could tell them that I'm struggling right now but 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 I better not because um you know they might not you know they might judge me or they might not think as highly of me if I tell them that I'm worried or I'm feeling a bit depressed or whatever it is. But actually, if you do tell them, it empowers them to open up equally to you. And then that cycle is called a vulnerability loop. And that's how you build and grow relationships um, that are that are meaningful. You know, there are a lot of relationships out there where it's quite surface, it's quite shallow. But this is almost how you take your relationship with somebody you feel you might be able to trust by kind of volunteering something that you find perhaps difficult to talk about. And then they respond in kind. And then you're sort of like, God, you know, I feel really close to that person because I remember when I told them this and they responded in a really supportive and understanding way. Yeah, and that's a really good thing to sort of apply to kind of adulthood in general because as you get older, I've spoken um, on a few episodes about this, you know, you making friends is not the same as making friends in uni. And kind of going from those quite shallow surface friendships to those deeper, more meaningful, supportive friendships, it does require you to be vulnerable. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Amen to that. That's a bit of a Brené Brown thing, isn't it? Have you seen the Brené Brown documentary on Netflix? I've read her books, but I've also seen the documentary and I really, I really enjoyed it. She talks a lot about vulnerability. No, I haven't. I'm going to pop that on my list of things to watch. At the moment, I'm watching Emily in Paris. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, no, but it came up as my recommended um, thing. And I, I said to my son, my son's 18. And I said, oh, when you're not here, when you're at your dad's, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to binge it <laughs> on my own because it looks really good. <laughs> Definitely. And I think um, you've just given like some cracking advice. And I think I just would love to kind of pull it apart to some actionable advice on how to sort of like overcome things like you know if you're feeling like you're on the edge of burnout or you're you know you're feeling a bit lost like what types of things can you do because I know one thing you said in your book um you would go to a cafe and you would work from there and I just thought that's genius (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, do you know what? I didn't do it at the start of my freelance journey. And and to be honest, I think I, well, I guess I didn't have a laptop for the first however many years. And actually getting a laptop is quite a, I just feel like everybody has a laptop now, right? (laughs) The concept anybody not having a laptop is 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 pretty weird in itself but I think when you can work from wherever you just hook onto the wi-fi find somewhere that takes you out of yourself so for me now I I couldn't do this in lockdown of course but um as soon as that was over I've gone back to working at the lounge bar in my gym so I have a very new Mac Book Pro laptop and the battery life is just phenomenal it pretty much lasts a whole day so I'll go and work up there and I can actually walk up so for me one of my ways of keeping on top of my stress levels and avoiding overwhelm is to get outside in the fresh air and um, to get some exercise So it's a short walk to my gym, so perhaps 15, 20 minutes. So I'll walk and I'll listen to podcasts or I'll listen to audio books or whatever, something that's going to inspire me or sometimes just music. So I can just kind of power walk to the music and then get to the gym, do a few hours work, surrounded by the buzz of people. And most of the time, in fairness, I have headphones in so that I can focus but it's just enough for me to be around people. I am quite a sociable person and I like that connection. So I'm using their Wi-Fi. Um, I'm working in the bars of their environment, drinking their nice coffee. And then after a few hours, I'll go and do a workout in the gym, maybe even just for half an hour, 40 minutes, just to get the endorphins going. Because once you get the endorphins swirling around your body, those are the kind of feel good hormones that make you um, just feel more in control and happier and more able to cope with day to day life in general. So, um, yeah, after that, go back to work. And but I just feel more productive for having a physical break away from my laptop And I think that's equally valid if you're sitting in your shared house and you're doing uni work all day um, or your whatever job you have. If you're just faced with working from home because you work in a call centre and your office hasn't reopened after the weirdness of this year, just make sure that you take regular breaks away from your laptop and do some stretching, stick the kettle on, make a cup of tea, um, walk up and down the stairs a few times, drink plenty of water, all those kind of practical health and well-being sort of tips that um, just keep you moving and keep the stress at bay. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I mean, I like, even when I remember being back at university, all those months ago (laughs) but but it was because I did a history degree you know I was sat at my desk reading typing sometimes sat in bed reading and typing but it was always really good just to get up and leave the house and walk to the gym and I think there is something about leaving your house that is so good it's really important I I don't know about you but at the start I mean I consider myself to be quite I, I, I'm not naturally an extrovert. I am an extrovert big time, but I consider myself to be an extroverted introvert, as it were. So at the start of lockdown, when everybody had to stay indoors all day and not see anybody, I feel like it turned me into a bit of a hermit. So I actually felt like once we were able to start seeing people again, I kind of didn't want to. And I had a lot of anxiety around socializing and and seeing people and having face-to-face conversations so I had um really from June when survival skills for freelancers launched I'd been doing a lot of this kind of thing so lots of zoom meetings with clients lots of podcast chats lots of lives on Facebook and Instagram and all this kind of thing so I was having the connection digitally but actually if you're not having that physical connection, you do get out of the habit. And 
in most cases, you can only have that proper physical connection by leaving the house. <laughs> so I would recommend leaving the house on a regular basis. You can feel a bit so easily if you're just staring at the same four walls all day. And especially if you're just hunched over your laptop all day without moving. And it's just not good. It's not good for productivity. It's not good for focus. And it's not good for mental health. I love um, that you mentioned, you know, it's not good for productivity because I definitely get into this state where I beat myself up for not working. I'm like, why are you not working? Why are you, you know, you should be working. And the fact is that by taking that 10 minute break or going to make that cup of tea, I'm actually going to do way better work. Yes. Yeah, you will. Because somehow actually stepping away from your laptop, it it's it sort of, it's like, there's this quote, and I can't for the life of me remember, it's quoted in the book, but it's almost, Anne Lamott, that's it. She said, almost everything will work if you unplug it for a few moments and plug it back in again, including you. And I love that quote because I think we do it with our technology all the time. I mean, we did it at the start of this call. <laughs> I came out and went back in again and then it worked fine. But we don't give that same care to ourselves it's like we just think we can drive ourselves and just keep going like all day long but you do physically need physical breaks you need to stretch you need to give your brain something different to look at you know if you've got a dog go out and walk the dog or if you're into mountain biking just hop on your bike or go for a run or whatever it is that's going to give you a proper physical break away from what you're doing what employed work or client work or um working on your dissertation or whatever it is you're doing um just taking a break and looking at different things and getting stimulation from other sources is a really good way to reset your mind and to deal with things like writer's block and productivity blocks and um and to deal with kind of poor focus yeah I definitely agree with that and I think I like how you say look at different things because I think you're right like it's so easy just to look at screens all day I I must look at way too much and I'm aware of it and it's something I've recently started doing is I will always schedule like no screen time I feel like I'm a child again like um like when parents are like no you can't go on your iPad no that's so wise I I genuinely think almost everybody in the whole world could benefit from scheduling no screen time because just pick up a book or, you know, as as I've said more than once, go outside and do something that doesn't involve looking looking at something that's a foot away from your face, you know? Um, But I just think sometimes just reading or just sitting quietly, doing a bit of thinking or if you've got sort of an activity if you're creative maybe do a bit of drawing or doodling or whatever just anything that just takes you away from looking at electronic devices just sit and listen to some music I am rubbish in fairness I am really rubbish at just doing the just sitting bit I'm I'm like I'm quite like you from what you've said that I find it where I feel like I should be doing something, achieving something, doing something productive every minute of every day. So I'm not very good at cutting myself slack and going, yeah, you really need to go and exercise. That's why for me, having these little routines, like walking up my gym, doing some work, doing some exercise, doing some more work, walking home, like those patterns are kind of part of my productivity um and and keep me motivated because when I have days that I can't get out perhaps I've got to wait in for a parcel or something like that if I don't manage to get out I know it by the end of the day I'm grumpy and I'm irritable and yeah it, it, it's really not good so I think become aware of the things that work for you different people have different coping strategies and um also look out for the warning signs that you might be approaching burnout so for example if you're having trouble sleeping if you're going into getting into bad habits in terms of your 
drinking more alcohol or you're not eating healthily, you're not looking after yourself, um, if you're feeling con- constantly, constantly anxious or worried, um, or you're having difficulty concentrating where you don't normally, those can all be signs that stress is building up and you need to do something to kind of break the cycle and the bad habits. Yeah, and one of the themes that I've really come across, um, I think, in this discussion has been self-awareness. And it's something that, like, I recently, like, I say recently, like, kind of like the, um, you know, kind of growing up, is something I value a lot more is being self-aware. And it's something that it doesn't happen straight away. I think you have to actually sit and think <laughs> about yourself. And it can be quite tough, but it's so important. Mm, yeah that's so true and sometimes that sometimes they're quite tough lessons to learn sometimes there are things that we don't like about ourselves and we may not feel that we can always change those things but I think part of the battle as you say is being aware that those are perhaps stumbling blocks for you or triggers or things that make you feel like perhaps you go into a thought spiral if something happens and you're sort of like whoa that makes me think of when this happened and then that made me feel sad or bad or mad and and then you can feel yourself getting into a thought spiral having that awareness that that is the process that is your brain is going through we're getting quite deep aren't we (laughs) but having that awareness means you can actually you can see what's happening And then you're more in control of it and you can deal with it more ably. Yeah, it's definitely getting quite deep, but it's still (laughs) like super like valuable. I think, you know, like becoming more self-aware is kind of the step to getting better at anything, really. Definitely. Not just work related, in in life in general, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, life can be like pretty much up and down even more now so with the pandemic and I think rules changing like every week and I think how do you find like managing that unpredictability because like you said at the start unpredictability uh, can't even say the word <laughs> unpredictability is part of freelancing in a sense and I think it's all sort of becoming more and more part of everyone's lives as well how do you kind of balance that it, that is such a good question and it's it's really difficult because even if you consider yourself to be quite a robust and resilient person it, anybody is going to be thrown by not having control over what's happening in the world right now and it's not just from the perspective of covid then there's brexit then there's economic recession then there's what's going on with the environment all this stuff that actually particularly if you are somebody who tends towards anxiety, as I naturally do, my daughter's the same, she does too. It, it, it's it's really scary. But I think the, ma- the main thing to keep track of is the fact that there's very little you can actually do to control any of these things outside of your own world. So if you if try to remember control the controllables that's kind of got to be a a bit of a mantra just keep reminding yourself control the controllables and don't worry about the other stuff because it's not something that you can kind of wake up in the morning and go okay right I am going to um I'm gonna stop the melting of the polar ice caps you know you can't do anything on a grand scale like that but what you can do is make conscious choices in your life that lead towards the world being a bit of a better place so I think hold yourself to high standards and by doing that you're setting an example to the people who are around you whether you're intentionally you're not kind of being preachy and going oh well I think you should recycle more I I don't mean that kind of thing but just try to act with some form of consciousness of the 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 larger the wider impact of the um the the choices you make and the decisions you take and basically just your day-to-day actions again very deep yeah it does um (laughs) it reminds me of something that was said in um, another episode with Gabby Mendez 
and she spoke about going you know everything you do you move closer to your ideal self and I think when things are unpredictable if you know like you said you really hold yourself to high standards and you take actions that embody your ideal self well when when stuff like goes mental and you can't control it and like things seem really bad at least you know that the actions you took are you know true to your core values and true to your belief system and that that's really good to know that and can kind of help with the whole unpredictability so much that I love that quote that you've just shared um from Gabby I I I really agree with that we're very much on the same wavelength there um I think it feeling in control and having positive mental health is a lot tied in with your own self-image and the kind of internal dialogue that you have day to day the things you tell yourself um the kind of encouragement you give yourself or otherwise you know do you have that sort of nagging voice on your shoulder that's telling you oh god that was a stupid thing to do and and I think the things you tell yourself have such an impact on how you come across in the world because if you feel good about yourself you are more likely to make others feel good about themselves too because you're sort of reflecting out that positive energy and yeah I I think I was going somewhere else with that <laughs> and I've forgotten that will come back to me no yeah to me. and but it's true what you said I'm like I mean when you say that nagging voice on your shoulder like I always imagine my like I have two brains and sometimes I get the like I the, my brain is just being really nasty to myself and then I literally do say I'm like literally like okay shut up <laughs> and that helps yeah. me because I can't stop those thoughts really coming in but I can say no like yeah that's not true just because I think it does not mean it's true yeah try to catch yourself in the act if you if you feel yourself uh, getting into that spiral of negative self-talk try to flip something so say if you've just said oh you know I, I, I shouldn't have missed that mistake in that piece of work then sort of flip it and try to think of something a, a positive way to reframe what you've just told yourself and I think it comes from Oh, first of all, yeah, one thing that I will um, mention is hold yourself accountable to this, that if you wouldn't say it to your friend, don't say it to yourself. So half the stuff that we tell ourselves on a daily basis, you're just kind of like, oh, God, you're such an idiot. You know, it's so easy to fall into that kind of really bad habit of doing that. But you'd never dream of saying that to a friend. So why do we do it to ourselves? I just think it's it's really important to catch yourself when you're doing that and sort of tra- flip it on its head, reframe it. I think that comes from a book, what you said about the two brains. I think there's a book called, I forget what it's called, but it's about the, it might be called The Chimp Paradox. Oh, I think my dad has that downstairs. <laughs> Yeah, I think I ask him if it's about um having like a, a a monkey brain, which is kind of to do with every time you have a knee jerk reaction to something or a, a kind of instant emotional response. I think that's your chimp brain in action. Um, yeah, check check in with him and ask if I'm right. Yeah, I don't think he's actually read it, but I will Google it. But um. Yeah, because I remember um, that when I was in therapy, um, I went to CBT therapy, did it in my first year of uni, and I was talked about, it was like, fight, flight, or freeze. And um, that kind of like, when you react to things, they can come into play. And sometimes like, um, the reason I went was because I was fighting in the wrong situation or freezing in the wrong situation. And that kind of thought and learning though about why these things happen really helps you to not only understand that it's not just you but actually visualize it in a different way and just accept it a bit more about what's happening yes yeah yeah I agree it's interesting but yeah no CBT is CBT is is such a great form of therapy it's so helpful in so many ways I've had it too yeah I just think like when I first did it I was like wait what is this I don't understand 
but it's basically basically um cbt will helps you kind of change the way you think so you will reframe things um you take more positive outlook it's pretty much like what kind of the advice we've been saying um but that's like the technical name for it yeah and if anybody is listening and doesn't know what cbt is it's cognitive behavioral therapy I definitely would recommend that. Um, So, well, this has been like an amazing chat and I'm just going to end kind of like the way we end every every episode is if there's someone right now who is just feeling really low and like life is not going their way, what advice would you give to them? Oh, that is such a tough question. There's so much, I would say. Um, I think it's really important to, to remember that everything passes, good and bad, But whatever you're feeling right now, it is a temporary state and it will pass and it will probably pass more quickly if you share how you're feeling with someone else, a trusted friend or reach out to someone. If anybody's really struggling, you can always drop me a DM. I'm always here. Um, Just, yeah, know that you're not alone and, and whatever you're going through, it's temporary and it will pass. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope you found it helpful. I really appreciate all the support I get for Hair Gets Better. It would be amazing if you could subscribe to our channel wherever you listen to your podcast. If you want some more content, then you can always follow us on Instagram at Hair Gets Better. And for more stories of inspiration and resources to help you get through life, visit our website, heyitgetsbetter.com. I hope you have a wonderful week. And remember, hey, It gets better.